Let's have a conversation now with Nebraska Director of Agriculture, Greg Ibaugh. Well, uh, Director, there's lots of things to talk about uh, in the news, but we'll get to those in a little bit. But really, what's uh, some exciting things, uh, you just returned from New York City with the governor to help promote Nebraska beef. So as you know, we've done a lot of trying to brand Nebraska in the international marketplace. But we really haven't made that attempt to do it uh, specifically in the domestic marketplace. So this was all about trying to work to brand Nebraska, especially in the beef area in New York City. Let's talk about how you were received and how Nebraska is kind of portrayed there in the nation's largest city. So we, uh, uh, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people have some recognition of Nebraska and know that we are a big beef producing state. So it was, uh, it was fun. We did a, a restaurant that we had a private event at that we invited some influencers to. Out of that event, we've had several news stories, a blog on uh, U.S. News and World Reports that was very positive to beef and Nebraska beef. And uh, then we did a couple events at a butcher, sh uh, an, an event at a butcher shop, an event at a more casual dining, Burgers and Lobster, which are partnering with us in London. And then we had another event at the Bull and the Bear, that's a restaurant in the Waldorf Astoria. And that's where Buffalo Bill used to hang out. So that was a nice connection to Nebraska. Nice tie-in. So with that, uh, Will we see more, maybe, those restaurants and, and facilities bring more Nebraska beef? And I assume others came in and said, well, yeah, we'll give Nebraska beef a shot. So part of it was these restaurants used Nebraska beef, mm -hmm. but they didn't necessarily recognize Nebraska beef on their menu. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to recognize Nebraska beef on their menu. They're going to start using our name to help drive their business. And so hopefully once other restaurants see that uh, it's successful and it has value, we'll see more and more of that in the New York marketplace. Governor Pete Ricketts has uh, announced just a few days ago he's going to uh, try to do, uh, what, four, uh, I believe, uh, trade missions a year. He announced the first one going back to a place you're very familiar with, the European Union. Yep, he's going to try to do two trade missions a year. And the first one that's uh, overseas of his... Uh, uh, ten years governor is going to be in Europe. We're going to Italy, to Belgium, and to Denmark. So with that, an opportunity not only for beef, but for all Nebraska products, because there kind of is a track record of Nebraska ag products being in those countries. So in Italy, we uh, do business with the largest meat uh, company in Europe, Analca. And so we're going to have meetings with them. We're going to work with uh, uh, restaurants that are promoting Nebraska and U.S. beef in their restaurant. We're going to work with their distributors that go out and sell it and help them understand the Nebraska beef story. But we're also going to look at food processing companies and bioscience companies that might be looking for a home in the United States and uh, definitely suggest to them that Nebraska is a great place to be. Yeah, there's still some opportunities. This will take place uh, early in June, and so folks want to uh, take part, contact your department, and you can get them the information, but they better do it pretty quick. Right. We're hoping uh, to kind of finalize the list of uh, participants by uh, uh, the first week in May, so that's coming up real rapidly. Now, in Brussels, we're going to talk a little bit more about trade policy mm -hmm. because that's the headquarters of the EU government and the commission there. And so we'll have an opportunity to maybe weigh in on the dialogue that's going on with the TTIP negotiations. All right. Talking with the Nebraska Director of Agriculture, Greg Ibaugh, let's talk about a couple of other issues that you've been involved in. Uh, one is uh, you sent a letter uh, to uh, a couple of uh, members of the Cabinet uh, expressing your concerns and the Department's concerns about uh, the dietary guidelines. And, of course, Nebraska is one of those hotbeds of folks commenting because there's been uh, some maybe differences of opinion when it comes to lean meats as part of that daily diet. So, uh, you know, there's a committee that gets together that's, supposed to, that's uh, empowered by Congress that's supposed to re uh, review scientific journals and scientific data to come up with guidelines for Americans as they approach uh, their, uh, their diets. And uh, the guidelines have always supported lean meat as being part of a, a healthy diet, and the science still does. 
And uh, what the, that committee did is at the end of their deliberations after looking at the science, they kind of threw in as a whim a sustainability clause or a sustainability measurement, which as we know is not defined. It means something different to everybody. It's not a term that we use in science or in government or anywhere. And uh, so it's arbitrary. And so that really left an impression and confusion with customers about what they really should be doing in their diets. And it wasn't based on the science that they were charged with the evaluation. Mm -hmm. So we'll wait and see. There's still some, like, some opportunities for folks to comment. and. So it's a them. recommendation yeah. to Secretary Vilsack and the Secretary of Health and Human Services. They can ignore it. They can modify it. They can do what they want with it. And so what we want uh, them to do is fall back on the science, do what's supported in the science, and that's still including lean meat as part of a healthy diet. A couple of things that have been in the news recently is uh, springtime, lots of activity going on. Uh, your department wants to make sure that anybody involved in agriculture remains a good neighbor. That's right, and you know we have uh, organic farmers, we have specialty crop growers, we have grape growers that uh, right now it's bud break time for those grape vines and so if you have a grape grower in your area those plants are very susceptible to herbicide drift and so we're just asking that everybody uh, be extra careful and know who their neighbors are. There's a tool you can use called Drift Watch where people that have those sensitive crops register or have bees they register and then you can go and uh, see where they're at to make sure that uh, what you're doing isn't going to interfere with their growing process. Another issue that continues, especially here in the Midwest, avian influenza hasn't reached Nebraska, but uh, you are keeping folks up to date on some possibilities, some precautions, and, and some things to look out for. So the state vet here in Nebraska, which is part of the Department of Ag, has been on high alert for probably about three weeks since uh, worrying about avian influenza. Most of the cases that have been diagnosed in almost every state around us are attributed to migratory birds. And as you know, we're a big uh, flyway uh, here in Nebraska, lots of sandhills, cranes, and ducks that go through here. And so how we've missed uh, having a diagnosis, I don't know, but we're happy about that. Very good. All right. Just before we let you go, we all know what it's doing in the countryside. We're not getting the moisture that many folks need. This is still a critical time. You and, and the department, one of those that works with the governor for a response for drought and, and dealing with those type of things. Have you had some preliminary conversations of, of looking at those maps and are, are you meeting and to put a plan in place if, if needed? So, you know, we monitor the National Drought Monitor that's written right here at the University of Nebraska, and we're uh, watching that. Might be a little bit early to start using the word drought yet, but, uh, you know, we definitely probably feel in some ways that we didn't get much snow, but we did get some beneficial rains throughout the winter that I think we don't, we're not giving as much credit to as far as soil moisture conditions as actually they did impact. And then, uh, it, but we need timely rains. We got a few last weekend. We're hoping to continue to get some again this weekend that'll um, help us get that grass started in our grazing areas and then uh, provide great conditions for corn and soybeans to get planted. All right, thanks for the update. Nebraska Director of Agriculture Greg Eyeball has joined us. That's the Ag View from Lincoln. I'm Ken Rogers.